Yeah. yeah. That's my formal education. Yeah. And uh, but I never did it because I finished school and I knew this was not what I was going to do with my life. Uh, I didn't think I could be very good at that. Uh, it wasn't. Um, I needed the more immediate satisfaction. And when you are a designer, it can take five years until you see something that you put on paper in real life. So I didn't have the patience for it. And uh, about less than a year after I finished school, uh, art school, uh, my mother was my mother was one of the three mothers of ceramics in Israel. There were three ladies from Germany who came from Germany and started ceramics in Israel. They were teaching and so on and so forth. And she broke her hip. Was on crutches. And uh, she had an, a, an exhibition that was planned three years before. But of, obviously she started to work the last six months. And she was on crutches. So I came to, she had an exhibition in Hamburg, in a museum in Hamburg. And I came to help her. I was her legs. She was sitting on the wheel, I took the things from her, I brought the things to her, I prepared the clay, and, and I was 25 years old, and it was the first time in my life I asked a question about ceramics, because before I tried to get away from it. And when she went to Germany for the exhibition, when I, both my parents went to Germany for our exhibition, I was in a very, uh, it was my, the, the most difficult year in my life because I only knew what I didn't want to do. I had no idea what I did want to do. So during that summer when they were in Germany, I decided well, I have to try it. And once I tried it, I got hooked. Mm. And that's it. All the rest is history. development from the single pieces that I have been doing in recent years uh, and I, I was once asked to give a, a speech, well, a slideshow of my work and the, the headline that I gave it was in Hebrew it, it, it is like a game of words but from in English too, from containers to a containing environment. Because the beginning of every potter is containers. Whether it's a container for coffee or, or for whatever. And, and then it becomes, as a very good friend of mine once said, and he's a very good uh, uh, ceramist, big name, Marek Tetsula. He started to do non-functional things. And people kept asking him, what is this? Okay? What is this? What is this? And his wife once said, she wanted to get everybody off her head. So she said, this is a volume container. So uh, we all do different kinds of containers. And when you, when you go into this installation, the installation contains the viewers, so uh, uh, it was it was a kind of a natural uh, development uh, of things. It's not because one day I decided I wanted to make an installation. Uh, it was not a, a target for me. Uh, they're they're uh, hung on on, uh, on wires, on yes. steel wires. Yeah, yeah. Because I've I've been doing these forms for years, and again, it just it's good for nothing, huh? As a piece, 
and it was just asking to not to have a bottom, to have a hole on both sides. Yeah, yeah, to be even less practical. <laughs> contradiction between uh, functional and uh, artistic. Uh, this is a thing that ceramics people are dealing with all over the world. Uh, very frustrated. Why aren't we considered fine arts? I refuse to go into it. I don't care what people consider me as. I, do, I don't think you can learn to be an artist. I think you either have it or you don't. And as far, as far as I'm concerned, I make a point of doing my things with very, as good as possible by me, craftsmanship. And whether it's art or not, I never know until I, I finish a, a piece. Sometimes it's art, sometimes it's not. It's just craft. Good craft, but craft. And craft is okay. It's good enough for me. I don't need the title of an artist. Craft, good craftsmanship is uh, not less respected by me. So I don't care about that. I, I refuse to go into this. This it's it's uh, everywhere. Everywhere we meet ceramic people, you hear these discussions about art, craft, craft, art. It's so not important to me. You know, you live in a country with mosques and churches and synagogues too, but they don't have towers. And even in, in nature, there are these formations of like we have two, we have a place in, in the south in the desert not far from Ela that is called King Solomon's Pillars and it's like a mountain cut into cut into pillars so again it's the it's the landscape it's the culture it's whatever is around and. Uh, 